Let's turn our Bibles to the book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll be looking at verses 1 through 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. The title of the message is A Good Soldier of Jesus Christ. A Good Soldier of Jesus Christ from verse 3. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for another day of salvation. Thank you for your grace and mercy bestowed upon our soul from your blood shed on the cross at Calvary to wash away all of our sins, past, present, and future, Amen. and allowing us to enter into the kingdom of heaven, for we are grateful, Lord God. Lord God, I pray for Pastor Shrive's family. Please be with them and comfort them, fill them with the Holy Spirit, and allow them to grieve during these tough times as we lost the great man, Pastor Mike Shrive, for now he is in glory with you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you very much for that. Uh, Lord God, we pray for... Uh, today's congregation, I pray for Pastor Jay, for him to allow to preach a convicting sermon, Amen. piercing our heart. Yes, Lord. Uh, keep us away from all temptations that might take us away during this preaching, Lord God. Amen. Allow us to have an ear to hear, a yes. heart to understand, and an obedient mind, so that way we may be focused onto the patch pastor is preaching Amen. and Lord God I also pray for anybody that's here that has not been saved by the blood of the lamb Amen. for the atonement of all their sins Lord God please allow them to to get saved today today yes. is the day of redemption Amen. today is the day of salvation Amen. and for Amen. any of the online listeners for them as well Lord yes. God please allow them to get saved for the from the blood's atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ Lord God I pray that you be with us today and fill us with the Holy Spirit yes. Bless this congregation, bless this beautiful day, so that we may be here in fellowship and worship for you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 A good soldier of Jesus Christ. When you get saved, you get automatically enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ. Amen. I mean, whether you realize it or not, whether you like it or not, you are a soldier of Jesus Christ. But are you a good soldier of Jesus Christ? You could be a bad soldier. You could be a, you know, expendable. You could be worthless. You could be a soldier that brings shame to his country. The worst thing that a soldier can do is desert his, I guess, you know, his service. Yes. Whether you're in army, whether you're in Marines, whether you are Air Force, you know, whether you're Navy, you know, anything in between, worst thing that a soldier can do is desert his team, you know. One thing that people commonly say when they're in the military service is that leave no man behind. Leave no man behind. But too many Christians nowadays leave everybody behind. Yes. And it could be you. You have so many people that need you. And you have people around you. And you have captain, king of kings, Lord Jesus Christ leading you. And you have tasks that are given to you, but you leave everyone behind. For your own glory, many times, for your own selfish reasons. Today, I mean this morning, it's time for you and I to really think about what kind of soldier we've been after we got saved. After you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, how good of a soldier have you been? When we look at verse 3, it says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You know, hardness is something that's going to come along the journey as a soldier. When military people talk about being hard, it's totally different from how hard it is nowadays. 
You know, it, it was much, much harder. Think about it. From World War I, it was harder than World War II. World War II was harder than Korean and Vietnam War. I mean, you know, so on and so on. Why? Because they had to go through things that you and I could never, ever imagine. You know, people walk through the field, and there are field mines, and it just explodes between your legs. You see your, you know, soldiers around you walking with body parts in their mouth. You see people waking up and trying to lift their foot and they only see their calf and up because they were frostbitten and their foot was stuck to the boots. You see and you hear the screams of your soldiers because you know, they put a you know, cage with live rats on their head. You see people screaming because they're put on a wall and getting nailed little by little, so that enemy could get some information out of you. I mean, those are the real soldiers who went through the battle. I mean, literally, whether they're saved or unsaved, many of them unsaved, they have so many characters than Laodicean, watered-down Christians like you and me. We go through our lives, and... We just take things lackadaisical. We take things for granted. Even though we're soldiers in the army of Jesus Christ, and we just live haphazardly, live a cliche Christian life, and just live just day to day without accomplishing anything. There's no discipline, right? There's no self-control, no temperance, no modesty. You just live the however you want outside of this, you know, rules that are put in place. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you endure hardness. Why? Because you love the captain who leads the army. I mean, captain of the, you know, our army is Jesus Christ. If you love your captain, you'll be obedient. You know, as our you know, brother prayed in this morning, I mean, are you that obedient? I mean, whenever you go and see a soldier, a soldier that is good soldier, a soldier that loves his country and his commander, they're very obedient, right? Obedience is better than sacrifice, like our Bible says. How obedient are you to the Lord Jesus Christ? They're like, I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, okay? Then he's the master in your life. You're enlisted in his army, and he is your captain. Do you listen to him? Do you obey him? Ask anybody who was in the military, you know, thank God for you. Would you, be, would you agree that one thing that's common amongst all the people in the ranks and one thing that's common for a good camp and good army and good group is that they're all obedient. Whether they like it or not, they're obedient. But I mean, when it comes to the word of God, are you that obedient? I mean, Bible says, I mean, abstain from all appearance of evil. Are you obedient to that verse? Whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord and not unto men. Are you obedient? Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Are you obedient? No if and buts. Are you obedient? If you're too busy to read the word, then you're too busy. If you're too busy to witness, you're too busy. If you're too busy to do things in the ministry, you're too busy. Then stop doing it. Whatever it is stopping you from you know, doing the works of the Lord, then you just got to stop. You cannot be a good soldier. You can expect to be a good soldier when you are entangled with things of this world. And you let things of this world constantly, you know, distract you, pull you away from things of God. When was the last time did you really feel like that you were a soldier in the army of Jesus Christ? I mean, if you don't realize it, then you won't know that there's enemy out there always trying to eat you alive. I mean, during the war, right, 
whether it's World War II, any other wars out there. Do you think soldiers just walked around, you know, like a daisically in the enemy territory without any protection, without any preparation? Think about your walking in Europe during World War II, and there are enemies everywhere. You're just going to walk out there, no weapon, right? No preparation, and just by yourself, just strolling down and saying hi to everybody. Like, hey, hello, you know, hi, you know, I'm from United States Army. You know, I'm an army from Ally Army, right? No, you know, you drop dead in a few seconds. You'll hear all the bullets coming at you. But that's how you are as a Christian. You're walking in this world where they're full of enemies out there. And then you're just walking like a daisically. You know, you don't have your weapon. You don't, you're not prepared at all. And then you think they're your friends, right? You think your enemies are your friends. And you walk around and you're saying hi to them. You're getting to know them better, you say, quote, unquote. And then you do things that they do, right? Yes. I mean, can you imagine? You a soldier practicing, you know, Nazi things. Can you imagine? I mean, you a soldier doing communistic, I mean, communistic things. No, they can't and they won't because they are, their patriotism is above that. Of course, there's always one or two loonies out there, you know, who betrays, but majority of them have the heart no matter what, even if I have to lose my teeth, my fingers, my hand, my feet, even if I have to just die, I will not give in to the enemy. When was the last time you had that kind of, you know, determination, conviction, attitude, and heart, where no matter what happens, even if I have to give up my life, I will not give in to the enemy. I mean, your enemy, your flesh, the world, the devil, it's constantly attacking you. Yes. But when was last time did you ever really check your heart and commit it where I will not give in no matter what? The reason you're a bad soldier is because you always give in. You always let the enemies win. And a lot of times because you say, I can't see, I can't see, I can't see. Yeah, of course, you know, our battle is spiritual battle. But there's... There's always things happening where you give excuses and excuse after excuses. But when will you ever stop giving excuses in your life? Do you think a good soldier gives excuses? They don't. They always own it, right, as they say. They take responsibility. And as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you need to start taking responsibility for all the things that's going wrong in your life. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming your husband and your wife. Stop blaming your children. Stop blaming your circumstances and environment. Own it for change. And say, it's, it's happening it's because of me. Because I'm a bad Christian. I'm a bad soldier in, in Jesus Christ's army. So it's on me. I need to change. I need to get right with the Lord. You're unreliable. You're fearful always. You're undisciplined. You're inconsistent. You're unmotivated. And you have no self-control and you have no conviction of a purpose in your life. That's what you are. And that's what, how I am many times. That's why we don't progress as a good soldier, enduring hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Instead, we are always being entangled with things of this world. Amen. I mean, you, you let little things bother you. You know, when you're in an army, or military service, especially you're in a war, you can't let little things bother you because it determines life and death for everybody around you. I mean, you're like, oh man, my boots, I don't like the color of my boots, so I'm going to wait and I'm going to paint it the way I want, right? Oh man, my socks is too heavy, you know? You know what? You know, I'm going to I'm not going to wear these socks, right? Because it's too uncomfortable. Man, this backpack is too heavy. 70 to 150 pounds of stuff, right? You know what? I've had it. I've been carrying this 
backpack for you know last six months in this war. I'm just gonna let it go, man. I'm just gonna be a free soul, quote unquote. They say free spirit. I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm in for a change, you know. I'm just gonna walk like a normal human being, quote unquote. And then what happens? You know, when enemy attacks, when you need your boots, when you need your socks, you know, when you need all the materials that you need, you can't find it. And you become an easy target. How many of you guys are easy target, do you think, you know, in this battlefield out there? All right. If devil really wanted to, if enemy really wanted to get you, how easy of a target are you? Right? Oh, okay, you know, this person, I mean, this Christian, I just have to send this temptation his or her way and down. Yeah. I mean, that Christian, man, little sorrow, they're done. Man, let me bring some bitterness to them. Wow. Oh, that Christian, okay, jealousy, envy, let's put it, let's put it on their way. Man, and then suddenly, you can't do anything for the Lord. So a soldier that can't do anything is no good soldier. I mean, you're calling yourself a soldier in the army of Jesus Christ, but you don't do anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as er everybody should know now, even people who's hearing, you know, Pastor Shrive went to be with the Lord, right? And he was a great soldier of Jesus Christ. Yes. I mean, why? I mean, even though he was going through everything that he had to go through, he still loved his captain the most. I mean, if things don't go well in your life, a lot of times you start blaming, and you start blaming people who have control. You think that people who have control in my life, you know, they're at fault. And that's why many children start blaming their parents, which you young people should stop doing. It's just you, you're the problem many times. Unless your parents tell you to go against the word of God, they make you do drugs and drink alcohol together, which unfortunately is happening at many, many families out there. Yeah. Unless, you know, they're like that, okay, that's a different story. But for normal, many of the families, your parents aren't going to make you do things that's going to hurt you. And stop blaming your parents. And as you grow and as you're in here, you know, Pastor Shrive, you know, he left his legacy. You know, you have our YouTube channel, many of his, you know, teachings and preachings, you know, especially in, on the subject of Catholicism, you know. He was really, really like a guru on it. So if you need anything, any information, preaching, you know, teaching, you know, you could start looking at his videos. One thing was that he loved his captain, Lord Jesus Christ. So no matter what other people were saying, he had his captain's words above any other words. When it comes to your life, who's your captain, first of all? Is that money? Is that your fame? Is that your lust? Who is your captain? Your captain should be Lord Jesus Christ, always. And if you love your captain, and if you love your commander, if you love king of kings, you're going to follow and you're going to listen no matter what the circumstances are. Whether it's a good circumstance, whether it's bad circumstance, or there's anything in between, you're going to follow his command no matter what. It might hurt you. You're still going to follow you might get sick, you're still going to follow. Your, your environment might get worse, but you're still going to follow. Why? Because you love your captain. Yes. Man, you know, when you hear some of the war stories, and especially, you know, our soldiers, what they did for their captains, you know, it brings like tears to your eyes, right? They, they literally did not care for their own bodies their own being, well-being, for the sake of the captain and the country that they serve. You, on the other hand, when something goes hard and when something goes wrong, even a little bit, you start complaining. 
And when something gets really tough, you give up. I mean, you're a, I mean, what should be your nickname, Christian? Your nickname should be giving up Christian, give up Christian. You shouldn't be called enduring Christian. I mean, look at your own life. How can you say, I serve my master, Lord Jesus Christ is my captain, king of kings, I love him with all my heart, but you're not obedient. Your action tells otherwise. I mean, all the loved ones, especially men of God, who has gone to be with the Lord recently, right? You know, Pastor Senior Shrive, Pastor Mike Shrive, you know, Dr. Ruckman, Brother Jack Chick. You know, common characteristic I could see is that they love their captain. They did what the captain told them to do. They did not let the things of the world entangle them. And they just looked at him and just followed him whether it's their wife, whether it's their in-laws, whether it's any other entity out there trying to sway them, they just kept on going. I mean, they, they didn't care. I mean, but you, on the other hand, you care too much about what other people think. You care too much about what the enemies think. You care too much about what you think, right? Sometimes stop thinking. Sometimes don't, do not let your flesh, what you think, overtake and you know, oversee what Lord thinks. I mean, if Lord is number one in your life like you say he is, then how come your life doesn't show it? You know, Christians should be doers, right? We go back to it. It's a theme. You, know? you and I cannot be hearers only. We have to be doers of the word then you really have to show it in your life. And it's easy to find out. I just have to talk to your family. <laughs> it's not like I have to talk to anybody else. You know, especially your children. I'll talk to your children. You know, unless you brainwash them. Like, oh yeah, if a pastor talks to you, you know, make sure that I read my Bible, I pray. You know, we have Bible study every night and we sing hymns you know, in the car, right? Unless you do that, you know, I mean, that's pretty wicked, right? You know, that's beyond, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Well, you, you, you have a good brain. You know, use it for something better than that. You know, scheming against, you know, those things. They're going to tell it like it is, right? They'll be like, you know, my parents don't really pray. I see them fight a lot, so I just go to my room, you know. Bible study? You know, what's that? You know, I only do it, I thought we only do it on Sundays, right? <laughs> you know, hymns? Oh, I mean, I love old hymns, but, you know, I'm too used to, you know, worldly music in the car, at home. My parents don't say anything, you know, if I go to, like, all these worldly stations, right? I mean, what kind of testimony do you have at home? I mean, are you the type of person that the you know, Lord could rely on as a soldier, in his army. If a commander knows for sure that you're disobedient, he's not going to give you orders. Why? It risks other people's lives, right? For some of you guys, you say, I want to do something for the Lord. I want to do something in the ministry. But the reason opportunities don't come, the reason you're not doing anything is because in your heart, there's disobedience in your heart. It's because you don't have that good testimony at home when other people can see you. And it's because at the end of the day, you're not there to follow the commander. You're not there to please the captain. You're there to please yourself. Many Christians become worthless soldiers because they let their environment control them constantly. I'm not going to hit it, you know, but I'm going to hit it again, right? Yes. Your environment, things that's happening in your life, you know, a lot of times outside of your control should not affect you in a negative way 
being a good soldier of Jesus Christ. If, if you hear something on the news, right, and I don't know what kind of bad news out there, say there's, there's a terrible disease going on out in the world, in the third, maybe somewhere, you know, halfway around the world, right? And not here, and then maybe it's happening somewhere in the jungles, you know, of, you know, Africa. And suddenly you're like, man, I feel so bad today. I'm having a horrible day. Yeah. There's something happening in the jungles, so I'm not going to do anything today. You know, work, I'm not going to work hard today. Man, it's affected me so much. And then for some people, like, oh, man. My favorite celebrity died. You know, he had a lot of influence on me. You know, he wasn't safe. He was cussing. He was a womanizer. You know. But I loved his movies. And he had so much effect on me. Man, so I'm, and the, your, your kids and your people around you are asking, why are you so sad today? Oh, man, don't you know John Doe passed away today? <laughs> well, OK. I mean, people like this. You know, needless stuff affect them. I mean, if soul is dying without Jesus Christ, that should affect you for sure. Yes. If someone that you knew, you know, rejected Christ, and you know for sure that they're not saved, and you didn't do anything about it, then you should be sad, right? In yes. those cases, right? But you shouldn't let you know, these worldly things, worldly news affect you to the point where you become too emotional and you're not doing anything for the Lord Jesus Christ. A good soldier of Jesus Christ is subjective. You know, they're not subjective. What does that mean? They do as what the Bible says. Amen. They do as what the orders are told. Now, one thing good about what you see between, you know, Apostle Paul and Timothy is that you, know, you even see, right? Look at verse 2, 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And Apostle Paul like, said, follow me, right? Yeah. And do as what the great you know, men of faith have done in the past, right? Now, some of you say, you know, I, you know, I, I love Dr. Ruckman, I love Brother Chick, and I love, you know, Pastor Shrive and Pastor Senior Shrive. And, and if you know, and if you love them, and if you appreciate them for what they have done, especially affecting your life, that touched your life, then what are you going to do? You follow their teachings. Follow those faithful men, right? And this is where... He truly separates good soldiers from bad soldiers, right? Some people want to hear only from the biggest of the people. You know, it has to be like president level, right? And anybody who's lower, they're like, oh, you're too little of rank, you know? So I'm not going to listen to you. I mean, I mean, does that fly in the military? No, right? Even a person who is like a one rank higher than you, you listen to him. Yeah, same as you listen to four-star general, right? That's, that's military. But, I mean, as Christians, you, you feel like, you know, a pastor doesn't tell me to do this, but say, you know, someone like teacher or anybody or, you know, pastor put that in that position to tell me this, to tell me, I'm not going to do it. You know, I have to hear from the man himself only. You know, some people have that kind of attitude. They're like, you know, I will not move unless the man himself come and take my hand and like beg me to do it type of attitude. What kind of soldier do you think that soldier will be? In a real tight knee soldier, you know, in, in platoon, what's going to happen? They're going to be alienated. They're, gonna, they're not going to do anything. And they're going to actually disrupt the camaraderie, you know. I and mean, one thing that's appreciative of you know, people here and people's listening, and you know how important our Bible is, you know, King James Bible. Amen. You know how important right doctrine and right preaching is. 
And you guys are here and you are listening because of that. And I know for sure that in many times, you know, even talking to, you know, one of the brothers on Wednesday, a lot of places you are never fed. A lot of places you are just there aimlessly, just filling your time on Sundays, Wednesdays, or whenever there's meeting. And we just say hi and hello and you just disappear. And it becomes like a clockwork cycle of going nowhere. However, in a Bible-believing local church, even though it may not be big like mega churches out there, you start building camaraderie. You start building that trust that you never had, that you, you never knew that is actually out there. You grow in the Word of God. And you start realizing that person sitting next to me, behind me, you know, in front of me, they're truly same soldier in the army of Christ. And then you're like, you know what? I'm going to die for that brother. I'm going to die for that sister. Why? Because we're in the same army. Amen. I'm not going to leave them behind. Amen. Why? Because I love them. Yeah. I mean, think about it. You know, people who are so tight-knit in those, you know, army or, you know, military, you know, platoons, you know, platoons, you know, whatever you call it, those four, 12, 10 people, they're closer than their own families because their lives depended on each other every day yes. out there fighting against the enemy. I know for sure that Pastor Mike Shrive had love for his you know, soldiers together, giving up whatever he needs to give up and sacrifice. Because there's a common love, common camaraderie, and common, you know, admiration, admonition for each other. If you want to be a good soldier, start thinking about all those other soldiers in the army. Stop being selfish. When was the last time you truly thought about each person as, man, I love them, I will not leave them behind. I'm going to go together. Levels are all different, right? Some people are more skillful. Some people are less skillful. You know, some people know more. Some people know less. But in the army, everybody worked together. People who know more will cover for the person who know less. People who have more skill will cover for people who have less skills. But at the end of the day, they try to bring them up together. They try to help them grow together, get better together. Because, say, if you're in a battle, you need everybody to be able to cover each other. That cover, north, south, you know, east and west. If someone from the east are not as skillful, then it will jeopardize other three people. Same thing. If someone from the south can't even shoot a gun and enemies start shooting, what's going to happen? You know, the other three people who might get hurt or even die. Then as a Christian in the army of Christ, you need to admonish one another and you need to really care for each other. Just yeah. think about each other, right? Yeah. I mean, leave no man behind. But I think, you know, a lot of times, you know, selfish Christians in the church will think that leave everybody behind except those who love me, who show that to me. Is that true? Or do I have to go and shake your hand and say I love you for you to truly feel like you're loved? Or is that some requirement in your you know, life where you know, unless that person show me their love, I can't love them? I mean, if Jesus Christ had the same thought of as you, you and I would never get saved, yeah. right? right? He would have never gone through what he had to go through, yes. right? We love him because he first loved us. Amen. That's the attitude that you should have. Yeah. You should first love him. Who cares, right? Who cares, right, you know, however they respond back to you. But if they're truly saved and in the Lord, right, their heart will know it. But it's, you shouldn't be that person. You shouldn't be that person out there where, like, you know, I will never move unless the other person moves. Very bad, very bad. 
That's where dissension happens. Can you imagine? You're in an army block, and you're in this tent. There's five of you, and two of them don't talk to each other. Two of them are fighting. Two of them will always talk bad about each other to other three soldiers. How do you think the environment will be inside that tent? Very toxic. It probably makes the other three so uncomfortable. Yes. Probably they want to get rid of both of you so they could be free, yeah. right? <laughs> but they can't. You know, you still need each other to finish the job together. Yeah. And when you realize that, and when you also realize that, you know, I'm going to see this person for eternity, eternity, right? You know, why not? Why not? You know, care for each other more. Why not think of each other as that soldier that is essential part of the, you know, army of Jesus Christ? I know it gets hard because sometimes your feelings are hurt very, very much, but you have to leave it to the Lord. You have to look beyond. You have to look beyond the things. I mean, you got to endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I mean, in the army, you know, maybe the day of the battle, you know, the morning time, you had spent with one of your you know, soldiers because you guys disagree on the type of food that's being served, which is good and which is bad, right? Or you love spam. You know, but other guy loves, you know, roast beef or whatever the other beef thing that comes in the can, right? And you argue with it, and then it gets heated. And sometimes, you know, people get heated with the littlest stuff, right? And then suddenly you don't talk to each other. And the general is giving you the orders, okay? You have to definitely protect each other because you won't know what's happening behind your back because you're only facing the fore, front. At that time, those little arguments get thrown out the window. Why? Because your life is more important. Because things that you do for the whole army is more important. Yeah. And then you start getting rid of all those selfish thoughts. Those little petty things doesn't matter to you anymore. Why? Because you have one goal, is to survive together, keep your life, and because you have one goal, to please the master and win the battle. When your goal is to win the battle, when your goal is to win spiritual battle, some of those things will not affect you anymore. Yeah. It will not bother you anymore. Why? Because what is goal in our life? Our goal is to preach the gospel to every creature, yeah. right? And you and I shouldn't let any of these little things stop us from preaching the gospel right. to every creature out there, right? Because, oh, uh, I had an argument with somebody today at church, you know, so I'm not going to pass out tracts anymore. It's on you. I mean, that should not stop you from witnessing someone so that they have opportunity and chance to go to heaven. You gotta let your feeling come in between someone going to heaven or hell. You gotta let your feeling affect in a negative way where that person might have had you as the only other opportunity in his life to know about Jesus Christ. You know, that's that's very shameful the way you and I behave as a soldier in the army of Jesus Christ. So today, you have to really think about it. What kind of reaction did I give out whenever hardness came along my way, right? There's going to be persecution. There's going to be false brethren. There's going to be inconsistent brethren. There are going to be scheming Christians out there. There are going to be blabbermouthing Christians out there. And there are going to be critics of the way you do by local Christians everywhere. 
And of course, there's going to be opposition of the world, science, flesh, philosophy, and the devil. Yes. It all going to hit you. So that's given. But as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, you endure hardness. Are you willing to endure hardness for Jesus Christ? Are you willing to sacrifice your life? Forget it. No, let's not go that far. Are you willing to sacrifice your comfort for the sake of your captain? Are you willing to give up something for the sake of your captain? Yes. Are you willing to really, really, really commit for the sake of captain? I mean, the choice is yours. We've seen our loved ones. We've seen, you know, our great fathers of faith. We've seen, you know, pastors who went to be with the Lord recently, how they were committed in the army of Jesus Christ. And that's their legacy. What kind of legacy will you leave behind if Lord tarries as a soldier in the army of Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Dear Father, we tend to forget once we accept the Lord as our Savior, we get enlisted in the army of Jesus Christ. However, we live a lackadaisical, you know, flesh-loving, emotional life of a bad soldier, worthless, shameful soldier, bring bad name to the army, bring bad name to our captain, bring bad name to our nation, Lord. Help us to recognize our state, get right with you, and endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And do it, not when we feel like it, but do it all the time, even when we don't feel like it. Heavenly Father, we pray for you know, Pastor Mike Shry's family. You know, it's not the easiest time, but we also know that he's in heaven with you right now. We thank you for that, Lord. We pray that you give comfort to the loved ones who he has left behind, and also rest of us who should be challenged and who should go out there and do more for you, Lord, and not, the, not let little petty things get in the way of preaching the gospel and being a good soldier, following the orders of our captain. We thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you for this local church. Thank you for the King James Bible. Thank you for the brethren, Lord God. And above all, Lord, even so come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.